one of the convenient things about the breath as a meditation topic is that it's with you wherever you go. It's always there to tap into. The important thing is that you remember to tap into it. It's easy to get lost in other worlds. Worlds of thought, worlds of emotion, issues of the past and present. But the breath is always there, waiting for you. So whenever you feel a need to let the mind settle down, it's always at hand. The important thing is the relationship you develop to the breath. To begin with, it's good to be on friendly terms with it. All too often people develop an adversarial relationship with their meditation object. And if you're on bad terms with your breath, you're really bad off. So keep reminding yourself this is the breath of life. This is what keeps the mind and the body together, and it only stands to reason that if the breath is in good shape, other things will go well in life as well. In other words, the body will feel good, the mind will have a good place to stay when the breath is comfortable. So learn to get to know the breath. Be on friendly terms with it. In fact, you can develop all four of those, what they call sublime attitudes, toward the breath. And it's good to have them right there in your breath. Because otherwise they become abstractions, they're words. I once heard some people talking about the problems they had with equanimity, and it was really the problems they had with the idea of equanimity. But if you can learn how to embody equanimity along with friendliness and compassion and what they call sympathetic joy with your breath or appreciation with your breath, then you don't have to worry about your reactions to the abstract now. You start learning when, which of the four is appropriate in your relationship to the breath. The attitude of friendliness is always a good, good one. Compassion can translate into when the breath is not going well. How do you deal with it? How do you help it? You don't just leave it on its own. Try to figure out why the breath is uncomfortable. Is it a physical cause or is it more of a mental cause? And allow the breath some space to come in comfortably, go out comfortably. Don't keep it tight and constricted. And don't force it too much. When we talk about adjusting the breath, people some people tend to get down there and squeeze it here and squeeze it there and push it like it were, as if it were taffy. Push it and pull it. And many times all I have to do is just think longer or think shorter or think all throughout the body. And simply the power of the thought will allow the breath to move in those ways. As for appreciation or a sympathetic joy, that's when the breath is going well. Maintain it. Give it the space to keep on going well. Help it along to see if it can go better. And if you're taking time out of your daily schedule when you're away from the monastery, don't begrudge the breath that amount of time. Because remember, if you let the breath have its space, then it can be healing, both for the body and the mind. And then when you leave meditation, don't leave the breath. Take it with you. You find that when you're breathing comfortably, you go through the events of life. 
You learn how to breathe comfortably even in the midst of difficult situations. You've got your ally here, someone who can help you. So develop some appreciation for the breath, for what it can do. Because on the one hand, if you've got a good breath going, then you've got something good to feed on. Most often we go through, through our lives looking for nourishment to make the mind feel good, trying to feed on this person's words. We hope that they, that person will praise us, or feed on our projects going well. But a lot of times it just doesn't happen. And so we're trying to feed off of what other people say. We end up feeding off of their garbage. As John Lee would say, we're feeding off the words that they spit out. Whereas if the breath is going good, you can sit there feeding off that comfortable feeling inside, and you look at their words that they're spitting out, and they just stay right there on the ground. You don't have to pick them up. You don't have to swallow them. You don't have to let the mind be the vacuum cleaner that it ordinarily is, just picking up the dirt all around it. Because you've got something better to feed off. As for equanimity, there are times when you really can't do much about the breath. No matter how much you work with it, it doesn't seem to improve anything at all. That's when you have to develop your equanimity and say, well, okay, let's just be with the breath as it is. Give it some time. Let it work itself out. And the funny thing is, when you develop these attitudes towards the breath, there's also you're developing healthy attitudes for different parts of the mind. You'd be amazed how people can be really rough on themselves, or maybe you wouldn't be amazed, you can see it in yourself, in a way that's harmful. But when you use the breath as your medium, the way you relate to different parts of the mind, different emotions coming up in the mind, you've got your tool, you've got your friend here. And it's taught you when to be friendly, when to be compassionate, when to be sympathetic, when to be appreciative, when to have equanimity. Once you've developed those skills with regards to the breath, you can use them in your own inner relationships and in your relationships with other people. And the ideas of these qualities become embodied in skills that you develop in the mind, a sensitivity that you develop, it. when to be proactive, when to be more passive. And what ways to be proactive that are really helpful, both for yourself and the people around you. And when you learn how to relate to the breath in this way, it's always there to relate to that way. Get in touch with it, and the relationships are there. The sensitivity that you've developed inside is there, and then you can use that in dealing with the world around you. So don't think of the breath as simply a place where you go to hide. But in learning how to deal with the breath, you develop skills, you develop attitudes, ways of relating that are useful in all areas of your life. If you take the time to pay it the attention it deserves.